A new FIU Cuba poll finds a majority of Cuban Americans give President Trump and his administration high marks on his handling of key national issues like the COVID-19 crisis. This is an important uh, possible swing vote in the all-important state of Florida. Talk more about the poll findings. We have Dr. Guillermo Grenier. He is a sociology professor and chair of the Department of Global and Sociocultural Studies at FIU. Professor, great having you. Your poll found I've that 65 percent of Cuban Americans approve of the president's handling of the coronavirus. That's not what the national polls show of Americans across the country. How do the respondents explain the support? Well, we didn't ask them to explain it, but it does fall within the, um, the range of re uh, Republican support for the president's handling of coronavirus. And I think that that's one thing that we have to keep in mind when we're looking at the Cuban-American population, dominantly Republican, over 53, 54 percent Republican. Within the Republican fame framework, they're answering pretty moderately. Uh, the Republicans in general give them over a 90 percent uh, uh, job performance rating. Nothing in our poll got him that high. The economy got him 80 percent. You know, so I think that that however they explain it, there is a, a great deal of support and enthusiasm actually for uh, to, to vote in the elections. And it seems like at least 59 percent of the Cuban Americans are going to vote for uh, Donald Trump. There is a 90 percent of the uh, electorate, Cuban American electorate, were, were excited about voting. They said they were going to vote definitely. So usually you're not excited about voting unless you know who you're going to vote for. So I think uh, uh, whatever undecided votes, which are there are about 10 percent undecided out there, uh, the rest of the folks have made up their mind. Now, we finished the poll about a month ago, but a lot of things have happened since then. It seems like a year has passed, but uh, a lot of things happened in the previous four years, too, and people remain excited and committed to voting. And your poll also finds that South Florida's Cuban community has become even more reliably Republican with fresh support coming from newer Cuban migrants. Now, what explains that shift? Yeah, that I think is an, the most interesting part of the whole poll. I think that you see that traditionally new arrivals have registered independent dominantly. Uh, some spill over into the Democratic Party. But there is a culture in Miami right now that has been uh, established over decades, really, of a Republican strength that uh, have, has was kind of dormant under the Obama administration to some degree. He gave more oxygen to Democrats and independents that might not fall within the Republican uh, uh, camp. But since the uh, presidency of Donald Trump got started, you see a rise in republicanism. You see a rise in conservative attitudes. It's kind of unleashed a, a new fervor. And that you can feel uh, it's, that, that is part of the environment the new arrivals arrive in. And if you want to, you're an immigrant, you want to make it in this society, you see what, uh, what advantages becoming a member of a party uh, brings you. The Republican Party is clearly um, uh, strong in that. Now, in the past, Cuban Americans have supported uh, Democratic candidates, and we're also seeing groups like uh, Cubanos con Biden, and there have been some displays of support for Joe Biden. But overall, why do you think Joe Biden is not doing as well as he possibly could with uh, Cuban American voters? Well, the it's difficult to say how well he could ultimately do any Democrat. I think Obama did as well as any Democrat has ever done getting into the 40 percentile. Um, it's the the Biden administration, the, the, the Biden campaign in general didn't have the roots in the community that the uh, camp, uh, Trump campaign had. So perhaps that's partly that partly explains it. Um, I think there's a long history in this community to um, commitment to the Republican Party. The Republicans have always been able to make the Cubans feel real important <laughs> and real valuable in their uh, overall strategy. So I think that has a lot to do with it. But I, I think there is uh, a solid 25 percent, according to our poll, and perhaps as much as 35 percent will go to Biden. And um, I think that that is as much as Hillary Clinton got last time around between 35 and 40 percent. It's that we don't know because exit polls aren't that reliable. And that's all we care about doing after the election. You know, we don't do polls after the election. 
What about the generational differences? Are younger Cuban Americans yeah. following the same politics as Abuelo and Abuela, or has that changed? Well, you know, it seems like there's a paradox there because you have, on the one hand, the second and third generation by now uh, don't think about Cuba and Cuba that much. I mean, realistically, uh, there are other things that they have to worry about uh, besides the coronavirus as well. You know, your careers, your, your life here in this country. Um, but paradoxically, when you're asked them to think about Cuba, you know, what do you think about Cuba? It's a, a place far away. It only exists really in, in narratives that you heard from Abuela and Abuelo and, and, and Tia Cuca, right? Um, so in that context, Cubans, yes, there is a generational shift, like there is a generational shift among all populations, right? But Cuba maintains a certain consistency throughout the generations. You learn about it from your parents or your grandparents. It's not the most important thing on your mind. You have healthcare and the economy to think about. Um, so nevertheless, when you think about Cuba, you think like, you tend to think about Cuba like your parents and your grandparents. It's a paradox, but it's it's decoupled, by the way. This is something else, is that the, the Republican identity is just that as well in within the Cuban American population. It's almost part of our identity. And it's decoupled from politics in a way. Uh, Professor, you can be a, yeah. we're out of time, but uh, you're right. There are many paradoxes. One is that why do Cuban Americans continue supporting policies when, in fact, nothing has changed in Cuba? But that is a discussion for another day. <laughs> Professor, <Right>, another day. <laughs> Professor Grenier, thank you very much for joining us tonight.